Hey guys, it's Libby, and today I'm here to make another misconceptions video. A while back, I made an eating disorder misconceptions video, and it went over really well, so I'm here today to do an anxiety misconceptions video. Before I get started, I want to give two big thank yous. Number one, to Kenzie Metzger for helping me out with this video. She helps me pull together the ideas and organize it and all that great stuff, so thank you to her. And her Instagram is down below in the description if you want to give her a follow. Sometimes on her stories, she posts like mental health like check-in questions and facts and things like that so she's a really great gal and you should give her a follow um, and number two I want to thank all of you guys for your submissions to help me make this video as well I couldn't do it without you um, I think it's so important that these types of videos are like a collaborative experience so yeah so anyways let's let's get started so the first misconception I'm gonna talk about is that some people think anxiety is not real I'm just gonna go ahead and say that is not true. Anxiety is real. Anxiety comes with physical symptoms, mental symptoms, emotional symptoms. It is very real. There wouldn't be symptoms if it wasn't real. You know, like it just kind of makes sense. Like things are happening for this person and those things together, they have a name and that name is anxiety. So it's real. People are actually experiencing it. The point I'll make is that why would anybody like pretend it's real? It's not a fun experience. It's not fun to have. So there's kind of no gain in saying that it's real when it's not real or something. Um, so it's real. Another misconception is that it looks a certain way. Like it only affects a certain type of person. A lot of people think it's only for white people. Is that true? No. People of any race, background, culture, whatever can experience anxiety. Some people think it's a teenage thing. Is it a teenage thing? Sure, it's a teenage thing, but is it also a child thing? Yeah. Is it also an adult thing? Yeah. So you don't have to be a certain age to be dealing with anxiety. People think it's just a girl thing. Is it just a girl thing? No, it's also a boy thing and it's also a not cisgender thing. So it affects anybody regardless of gender identity. And then some people think that it's only for the middle to upper class. Again, that is not true. It can affect anybody of any socioeconomic level, background, whatever you want to call it. It can affect everybody. Some people think that if you have the perfect life, that you shouldn't have anxiety. But it doesn't work that way. Anxiety can be triggered by things that have nothing to do with your life, like what car you drive or what kind of house you live in or whatever or maybe how happy you look with your boyfriend, whatever it is, it's not affected by that necessarily. It can be affected by all kinds of other things. So, I just want to sum up that anxiety doesn't look a certain way. Anxiety can affect anybody. Another misconception is that anxiety is just for attention. Like I mentioned earlier, anxiety is not a fun thing. People wouldn't experience it just for attention because the payoff isn't really worth it. Like it's not worth it to feel these terrible feelings and be like, oh, well at least I got some attention out of it. Like, no, it's, that's not, it's no, it's not for attention. And then other people think that anxiety is trendy or cute or quirky and that is like such a prevalent thing right now, mental illness, because it's such a popular topic right now. Some people do think that it is trendy or whatever to have a mental illness. No. 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 Like, I, I can't even like explain like how no that is. It's not trendy to have anxiety. So don't don't like if, if you don't actually have anxiety don't pretend like you have anxiety but i will say that most people are not pretending like the, most people aren't doing it just for the attention or because they think it's trendy there are a few people out there like that but the majority of people actually are struggling now some people think that people with anxiety are always struggling like they think that if you have social anxiety you can't talk to anybody without a meltdown is that true no certain things will trigger anxiety in people and so if you have social anxiety it might not be every social interaction that causes you anxiety it might be maybe every single thing causes you anxiety and that's valid but that's not true for everybody so anxiety isn't an ever-present thing and say they've got anxiety that's just generalized anxiety it's not like they're just sitting there like this all day like oh my gosh i'm gonna die i'm gonna have a breakdown like again some people are like that but that's not everybody and that's not the majority. Most people are getting through their day relatively okay, 
functioning, you know? It's not like it's like an uh, all-consuming thing all the time. Going along with that, anxiety attacks, or just anxiety in general, those feelings, don't look a certain way. They can look different in everybody. Some people start shaking, some people start rocking, some people start like, you know, like getting fidgety and stuff like that. You know, there's a million different ways that anxiety can look, and some people you can't see it at all. It's not always some big breakdown rocking on the floor in fetal position. It's not always like that, you know? Um, so you can't necessarily see when somebody is having anxiety. Number one, if you don't know what to look for, and number two, if it's not visible at all. So just keep that in mind that anxiety doesn't look a certain way in that you can tell when they're having anxiety. Sometimes you can, but not always. That said, I want to say that people can get really good at hiding their anxiety. All their nervous habits and tics or whatever you want to call them, they can be hidden with enough practice. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't necessarily know when somebody's having an anxiety attack, like I said, or just experiencing anxious feelings. Um, I also want to say that they can sound confident when they have anxiety. Again, that goes in with hiding it. You can sound confident when you have social anxiety, even if inside you're not feeling that way and you're feeling socially anxious. Um, I also want to say that you can smile and make jokes about it. And again, it's still a very real feeling inside of them, but they're just putting on a front. And that could be a defense mechanism, that could be for your sake, you know. Um, it could be for a lot of reasons why they hide it, but it can be hidden by all these different ways. People with anxiety have ups and downs just like everybody else, so sometimes they might be able to hide it, sometimes they might not be able to hide it, but all experiences of anxiety matter. They're all important, they're all crucial, to this person in the way they experience their life. So just remember, even the small symptoms matter. They matter. Moving on, I wanna go on to the misconception that people think that you can just snap out of it if you try hard enough. Um, not true. If that was true, nobody would have anxiety. If, if it was all just about taking one more deep breath, I think nobody would have anxiety, you know? It's not that easy. If it was just try hard enough, like, Nobody would have it. Like, I just don't know why that's not common sense. If it was that easy, nobody would have it. Some people think that having anxiety, you're just being dramatic about your feelings. You're overreacting. Some people think that you're just being uptight. Like, if you have social anxiety and you're, like, feeling anxious in a social situation, they're like, oh, she's just being uptight. She's just a bitch. That's not true. It's anxiety. Some people might view it as laziness or a sign of weakness. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, no, that is not what it is. You can't, like, say anxiety means lazy or anxiety means uptight or whatever you can't make those those judgments those because this means this you can't do that you don't know enough about this person's experience to make that kind of conclusion about them and their anxiety again a deep breath isn't always going to fix it and when you say oh well, well have you tried this like have you tried taking a deep breath or have you tried like counting your breathing or whatever you're gonna say to them Chances are they've tried it. If they're struggling with anxiety, especially for a long time, they've probably tried all the tricks in the book, okay? I mean, it's nice that you want to help them, but just know that they've probably tried it. Um, but, you know, maybe they haven't. Maybe you come up with something that they haven't tried yet and it'll be really helpful for them. Who knows? But I just want to say that they've tried. They're trying their hardest, okay? Some people think that if you eat healthy, avoid caffeine, exercise, all that good stuff, your anxiety will go away. Again, if it was that easy, people would do it. Anxiety is worse than exercise, and that's saying a lot coming from me. I hate exercising. Anxiety is worse than exercising. I would exercise to never have anxiety again. I would do it. I would do it. Um, but that's not how it works. I wish that's how it worked. Again, it can help. It might be helpful for some people, and if it is, two thumbs up, woohoo! But that's not gonna be the cure-all for everybody. Um, some people also think that you're gonna grow out of it, and while that could be true, some people might learn how to manage their anxiety as they get older to where it's not really a problem for them anymore. That's not true for everybody, and that shouldn't be expected of everybody either, because anxiety is a tough thing. Like I said, it's not an easy fix. So you can't just say, oh, you're, you're, you're 35 now. Why, why are you still feeling like that? That's a teenage thing. Like I said again earlier, it's not 
specifically a teenage thing or something, you know? So keep that in mind. Other people think that if you just take medication, it'll be fixed. And medication certainly can help. Does it help everybody? No. And if it does help you, does it make it completely go away? Probably not. So anxiety can certainly be helped with medication, but that's not gonna be the cure-all again. So the next misconception I wanna talk about is what anxiety is. Is it the same thing as just feeling anxious about, say, a test? No. Is it the same thing as stress? No. Is it the same thing as nervousness when you gotta give a speech? No. Um, while you certainly could have anxiety and feel those things about things, and maybe that is how your anxiety is manifesting, that's not necessarily like if you have those feelings, that doesn't necessarily mean you have an anxiety disorder. So you can feel anxious without having anxiety. So there's like a certain like bar, like a certain level that is like anxious, anxious feelings, bar, anxiety disorder. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. But if you think that you might have anxiety or that somebody else might have anxiety, the best thing to do is go see a professional, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a regular therapist or counselor, somebody who's trained and can diagnose you. Self-diagnosis is a start. You could like take a look at symptoms and diagnose yourself or diagnose somebody you know. I don't really recommend that. The professionals know what they're doing, so go to them. Some people think that everybody experiences anxiety in the same way or from the same things. So there's generalized anxiety, there's social anxiety, those are the two main ones. But like, I get anxiety in food situations because of um, my eating disorder. And I don't know if that counts as a anxiety disorder, I've never gone into it that deep with anybody, so I don't know if that counts or whatever, but like, Anxiety can be triggered by all sorts of different things and it's different for everybody. So like I said earlier, you can't you can't make assumptions about people and their anxiety. You just don't know enough about them. So don't make assumptions, okay? A couple more things I want to note is that social anxiety is only for shy people. Not true. People who are the most outgoing people you know could have an anxiety disorder. Um, some people also think that anxiety goes away after the trigger leaves. No, I wish, but anxiety can last. It can last and last beyond whatever the trigger was. And even if there was no trigger, but you, like, you know, it's been some time, that doesn't mean that your anxiety is going to go away right away. So anxiety can stick around. Unfortunately, I wish it didn't, but it can. Some people also think that if you just avoid the trigger altogether, you'll never get anxiety. I wish that was the case, but anxiety is a powerful thing and it will find its way to get up in your business. And you know, it's not always reasonable to avoid the trigger. Sometimes you've got to give a speech for English class and you have social anxiety and if you don't give the speech, you're going to get an F. You know, like sometimes you have to do it. Another misconception is that people with anxiety are never happy. That's just simply not true. People with anxiety can experience happiness like anybody else. And like anybody else, they have their ups and downs. So, you know, while they might be struggling sometimes, that's not all the time. The last misconception is that anxiety is only mental. And that goes into the like, why can't you just fix it or something um, mentality. Anxiety is also physical, it can give you a headache, upset stomach, loss of libido, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, fatigue, problems breathing. Um, so it's not just mental, there are physical symptoms that go along with it. So again, if you just don't think anxiety is real, like what about all that stuff, that, all that science that goes with it, hmm? So yeah, it affects your health. It can, at least, you know, like with your heart rate being increased and your blood pressure being increased, that can have lasting effects on you. So, um, anxiety is physical too. That said, those are all the misconceptions I have for you today. If you have any more you want to leave down in the comments, feel free. But I hope you liked this video. I hope it was enjoyable, informative, and good. So, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe. Yeah. So, yeah. Have a good one. Bye.